Hello, uh, welcome back uh, to my YouTube channel. So uh, we are on a mission to, you know, to learn software. So and we have already started with uh, a finite element software, Abacus. Uh, so uh, we have started a submodule of Abacus, that is Abacus for beginners. Today's lecture is about solving a beam bending, you know, uh, problem in abacus in the previous video uh, i tried to make you aware of uh, various kinds of tools and various kinds of modules that are there in abacus in the graphical user interface of the abacus i hope and i believe you must have you know uh, gone through those tools and gone through that uh, that video and you must have uh, grasped what i tried to convey so i'll uh, in the beginning I'll try to you know, give a brief uh, of what we discussed in the previous video uh, regarding uh, graphically graphical user interface. What are the different types of modules? Uh, overview of the of lecture one. So uh, in the module, uh, I try to make you aware of that we need to create part or parts. First of all, then what we need to do is we need to create properties. We need to assign those properties to these parts. Right. After uh, creating parts, assigning properties to these parts and what we need to do is assemble those parts. For assembling those parts, we have different types of tools available that you'll get to know in coming videos and in this video as well. Parts, properties, assemble. Then an important uh, step is to create a step, wherein this gives you, uh, you know, what uh, this tells us what type of analysis we want to perform, right? And after uh, after step, what we have to do is, is there any kind of interaction between different kinds of parts that we have assembled? So we need to create interaction. And after that, uh, sorry. Uh, After interaction, uh, what do we need to do is loads and boundary conditions. That is in a single module. We create a part, we create property for that part, assign that proper property to that part, we assemble different kinds of parts, we create a step, then we inter give interaction properties for different parts, we create loads and boundary conditions and importantly we mesh this assembly or the parts because since this is a finite element software this meshing plays a very important role in analyzing you know uh, our problem and uh, eighth we create a job and then submit that job for the analysis. So this was the brief of what we uh, you know discussed in the in the last video so uh, i'll i'll blot it so i'll start with the video for today i had given a uh, i had given a beam uh, in the last video itself i had uh, given you a kind of a cantilever beam problem i'll put it here also a cantilever with fixity at a and free and b that is subjected to udl uniformly distributed load right of 5 kilonewton per meter is the loading 
and span I had mentioned as 5 meter, right? I have uh, given a cross section for this beam, a rectangular cross section. This is 300 mm is the width and uh, 400 mm is the depth, right? And I had given uh, material properties as modulus of elasticity equal to 2 and it is 2 into 10 power 5 megapascal or you may call it as Newton per mm square. This is for steel. This is a steel beam. Poisson's ratio uh, mu you can you can uh, you know represent it in uh, with any symbol. It is 0 0.3. So the question was what is the deflection at B? Deflection since this is going to deflect this way, let me show it here. This is a fixity fix fixity here, so it's going to deflect this way. We want to calculate this delta max at B, right? This is the deflected profile. What is the deflection at B, delta max at B? And also we were interested in uh, calculating what is the bending stress sigma at A. What is the bending stress at A? So this problem we'll try to analyze in today's video uh, using one of the ways. Uh, there are multiple ways of analyzing this problem in Abacus. So today I'll show you one such way. But first of all, I hope you must have tried it out. And I'll here in this video I'll also uh, first solve it analytically. We already. If you if you remember from basic mechanics, uh, for cantilever beam subjected to UDL, we have a problem uh, subject to UDL. If we if we want to calculate the deflection at B, that's delta max. We already know the formula. That is W. It is the loading that's given there. L is the span, power four, by eight EI. Got it. W is the loading, it is the UDL here, 5 kN per meter, L is the span, E is nothing but it is the material property and is modulus for this beam, I is the moment of inertia. Here I is equal to E d cube by 12 for a rectangular section, B is nothing but 300, we are, we'll deal it in mm also only, and 400 cube you would be 12. If you calculate it, it's uh, coming out to be 1.6 into 10 power 9 mm power 4. Correct. Now, what is W? It is 5. We want to, we have to be careful about the units, 5 kilonewton per meter or 5 newton per mm. It is the same, either 5 kilonewton per meter or 5 newton per meter per mm. We are dealing with mm only, newton mm. So here newton mm, uh, L is nothing but 5000 mm power 4 divided by 8, E is nothing but 2 into 10 power 5, right? It has a units of Newton per mm square. So we are going in the right direction. I is 1.6 into 10 power 9, correct? So if you solve it, you are going to get deflection equal to 5000 power 4, we will solve it. 
and you also try it out right one point two two is the deflection one point two two mm since we are dealing in mm only so you need to remember this value 1.22 mm you cross check it if it's correct second is what is the bending stress at at a uh, we need to calculate sigma at a so we already from uh, pure bending theory uh, or flexural formula we may call it uh, it is m we already know this m y by i right this is the flexural stress or bending stress bending stress we are calculating at a for that we need to calculate what is the moment at a y is nothing this is this is the depth at which we are calculating you know stress so our stress diagram if you see this is this is the cross section it's linear elastic our stress diagram is like this sigma max sigma max at the top this there is tension because this cantilever beam at the bottom there is compression so both will be equal and opposite uh, i mean equal and opposite in nature so we want to calculate this uh, sigma at this is our y the depth of the fiber at which at to what at which we want to calculate this uh, uh, stress from the neutral axis this is our neutral axis but there is neither tension nor compression no flexural stresses or strains what is this y here our total depth is 400 right 400 mm so this will be 200 y is our 200 correct and i as we know it is 1.6 into 10 power 9 mm power 4 but what is moment at a moment at a if if you look if you look at this uh, beam what's moment at a this is nothing but w l square by 2 w l square by 2 so m is nothing but w w is 5 newton per mm into l square l is 5000 square by 2 this is our moment remember m at a you can calculate it uh, i assume this uh, the basic mechanics concepts you already know into y y is our 200 divided by 1.6 into 10 power 9 so if you calculate this uh, you will have uh, 5 if you you try it out i am doing it here only 10 power 9 7.8125 7.8125 newton per mm square since we dealt in newton and mm only so we've got the answer 7.8125 newton per mm square these are the exact solution this is the exact solution uh, or you may call it as analytical solution so you need to remember these values i'll put it here in red delta max equal to 1.22 mm 
सिग्मा ए इक्वल टू सेवन पॉइंट एट वन टू फाइव एम पी ए और न्यूटन पर एम एम स्क्वायर सो वी वॉन्ट टू कंपेयर अवर एनालिटिकल रिजल्ट विद आर अबेकस रिजल्ट राइट सो नव लेट्स डाइव इन टू अबेकस If you have Abacus installed, you will have uh, you will get an icon here, or you may type it here. You will get something window window like this. Yeah, I hope uh, you got it. So you may you can now. This is the GUI that I have already introduced you to. We can cre create parts, property, then assigning that property to the part assembly. Create uh, this step. Uh, we want to create. Then we give interactions, load and boundary conditions. We give. Then we mesh our assembly and the or the parts. Then we create a job. So today, uh, I told you in the previous video itself, we will solve the, this problem in two ways. One as a we solve it as a one D problem. one dimensional problem and in the next video we will create a 3d geometry of the beam and then solve it here we are interested in only 1d like the way we did it here we represented this beam as a one dimensional element one dimensional beam and then try to solve it so let's let's start as i uh, as i already i uh, told in the first video we need to follow these steps only no need to go here and there just first is the part we are in the part understood first uh, here we are in a part it says create part we will click on this this will pop up this window will pop up we will name this part as 1d b but uh, before before going this i want to highlight some very important points abacus does not follow any specific units it does not have units at all so are you going to work in mm are you going to work in meters accordingly you will have to follow the system of units you need to be consistent with that let me show an example Uh, I have a system of units here. You need to follow that. Please look into this. This is the system of units that Abacus or most of the fine element softwares follow. They do not have any specific units. Suppose uh, you have created a beam, but you have given units in mm. There is no mm, but you have created five thousand something some units like five thousand units. If you assume that is that a mm, I have created it in mm. you need to follow this system of units right you need to give force in newton you need to create mass as ton you need to have time in seconds you need to follow stress as mega pascal similarly energy as millijoules density as ton per mm cube you don't have to see mm and then you will say uh like anything Uh, it will be it would be kg per meter cube or anything similarly if you are uh, drawing something in meters remember force will be in newton mass will be in kg time will be in seconds stress will be in pascals you will get the results right if you want to calculate stress that stress will be in pascal the units will be in pascals if you want to calculate energy that will be in joules if you are so here we will uh, we will adopt mm mm system of units please uh, bear with me we are going to start with mm very important thing that you need to remember abacus does not have any kinds of units or in even in ls dana it have, we have to be consistent with the units that we follow right so now let's create let's create a part 
let's name this part as 1D, 1DB. Now it says, is it 3D? Is it 2D? Is it axis symmetric? Different types of problems you may analyze in Abacus. It's versatile. Is it deformable? Is it discrete? Is it analytical rigid? Is it Eulerian? These are different types of things that you will come to you know, you will know in future. Is it solid? Is it shell? Is it wire? Is it point? If I, uh, you know, click here, continue with the default, it will create a 3D geometry. But since I told you I want to create a one-dimensional beam, that is just a line, then I will assign a cross-section to that. So I will click on wire. Okay, that will be a 3D geometry, but I want to represent that 3D geometry, 3D, uh, you know, in the 3D, it is no modeling space. I want to model this in 3D. It's not a 3D element I'm going to create. But here, is it a deformable or discrete is deformable? Is it solid? If I'm going with the solid, it, it will create a 3D geometry of it. If I'm going with the wire, it will create a line, a one-dimensional element. Here, what is the size of your domain while you are working? Let me put it as 2000 or 20,000. That, that means it will create a grid of 20,000 by 20,000 mm. I'm assuming I'm working in mm. Like I'll, I'll work in mm. So if I continue, it's saying invalid name because we cannot put this dash in the name. Okay, one dimensional beam. Continue. Again, invalid name. We cannot start with one as well. So I can write one time one db. Continue. Now again in a, something. It says approximate size should be between this and this. So we have to reduce one zero. Or we can put it here as a nine thousand. Since our beam size will be five thousand, let's put the grid size as nine thousand. Okay. See, it has created a grid. Now we need to whatever we need to draw, we need to draw it here. These are different kinds of uh, tools that are here. You can create a point. You can create lines using using this option. You can create circle. You can create rectangle, ellipses, arcs. These are different types of uh, here. You see, you can create an offset. Just like in, if you are familiar with AutoCAD, these tools are similar to AutoCAD. You can mirror, you can translate. But since we are just beginning, we are just starting, you don't need to worry about that. We'll see all the options in near future. But here, let's, we want to create a line. I have created a line. It says pick a starting point. I can give a starting point as 0, 0, 0. And the next point as some, so 0, 5,000. First point is x. Second point is y. Okay, since we are in 2D, planar geometry. We are drawing a line that will be in a single plane. It's not necessary to give coordinates every time. Since I've clicked on this, I can click anywhere, then I'll draw a line any of any dimensions. You know, you need not worry about anything. Then escape. I have escaped. Now I can hear this option if you see, add dimension. Now I can add dimension to this line. Add dimension. It is saying select the entity. I will select this. I will click. When I click outside, it says new dimension. What is the dimension? Since the dimension will be 5000 mm. Okay. I will escape. I will say done. See, it has created a beam, not a beam a line of 5000 mm or 5000 units but we are we know we are in mm so it is a line of 5000 mm you got it our first part is done our first module is done that is creating a part since our problem consists of a single part that is a beam so we have created a beam next step property let's go to the property you need to follow you need to go to this every time you need to go to this first option here it will say you it will ask you what create material okay we'll create a material what is the material we'll say it is steel right steel 
go to general density what is density uh, remember here you need to follow units density we are using mm we need to follow density is tons per mm cube tons per mm cube since we already know the density of steel is 7800 kg per meter cube if we want to convert it into tons per mm cube you just multiply it with e power minus 12 you can try it out as well you can uh, convert the system of units from kg per meter cube to ton per mm cube it will be like this it will be 7800 e power minus 12 okay i am done with the density that is in the general general option now i want to give modulus of elasticity for this beam create i have clicked on mechanical elasticity elastic properties okay it says what is Yang's modulus Yang's modulus has a units of pressure you remember newton per mm square so do i need to follow newton per meter square or per mm square you need to follow this what is the unit for stress or pressure megapascal that means newton per mm square so i need to give it 2 into 10 power 5 1 2 3 4 5 2 into 10 power 5 newton per mm square is the youngest model for steel poisson's ratio 0 0.3 right you can click on ok understood what we, what have we done we have created a property you can see that in here material manager we have created a property steel you can add it as well add it we have created a density we have created elastic properties i need not edit it we, we are done with it now second we have not assigned it to the beam yet we need to create a section i have created a section what type of section is it since this is just a line but i'm saying it's a rectangular beam so i need to define let's say section is rectangular beam is it solid no we are not creating a 3d geometry shell no a beam yeah so it's a beam if i click on continue it will say oh what is the profile name but i have not created any kind of profile for this that means i have not created whether it is rectangle whether it is circular or anything but you can do it here itself there's an icon here option here if i click on this it will create a profile what is the profile is it box is it uh, pipe is it circular rectangular what is it rectangular we we'll go to the rectangular it says what is a and what is b a is the width of the beam b is nothing but the depth of the beam so what is width of the beam it is 300 mm right what is the depth of the beam it's 400 mm i have created a profile in here itself profile what is the material to this profile since it has already taken steel there is only one material available what is the section it is poisson's ratio is 0.3 done now i have created a material i have created a section and that section has been already assigned a material steel now i want to assign that material to this or that section to this beam let me go to next option assign section assign section we, we need to uncheck this uh, otherwise it will create sets uh, now it says select the regions to be assigned a section this is the region we can drag i selected that beam i'll click done which okay here if i had created multiple sections those would have been here but there's only a single section it is saying okay they have created a rectangular beam section that is a type is a beam material assigned to that section is steel okay i'm okay done now it has turned green see it has turned green so now i'm done with the property assignment as well what is the next assembly since i don't have multiple parts to assemble but i still need to go to the assembly we go to the first option again create instance it says what do you want in your assembly i want one dimensional b right okay 
okay now this beam has been in uh, you know put in the assembly it was not there now it is there now before uh, this assembly in the property itself what we did we created a property we assigned we created a section we assigned that section now since that section uh, it's a one dimensional beam and we are creating section we are creating that section we need to assign beam orientation as well what is the orientation of that section with respect to the longitudinal section of the beam we can select this select the region to be assigned a beam section orientation what it tells at the bottom we'll say done okay okay this is this is right you just need to click click enter enter and uh, i'll explain it later what this orientation means what is the orientation of that section with respect to the longitudinal axis of the beam now we are done with the sm properties assembly step step is again you need to go to the first step right what is the S analysis you want to do i want to create a static general analysis this is static analysis continue here it says time period what is the time of your analysis how much time you want to assign to this analysis by default there will be one second we'll keep it as it is it will vary once you go once we advance into the advanced level of uh, you know analysis this time period sometimes we need to increase it suppose loading itself is for 500 milliseconds or 500 seconds then we need to you know at least we need to you know then vary this but here let let's keep it as one second done we are done with the prop part we are done with the property we are done with the assembly we are done with the step we are done with step now next part is interaction but since there are no uh, multiple parts there is no interaction between parts so we will skip this part interaction because there is there is no interaction to be defined between the parts because there is just a single part now loads in the loads again go to us the very first option create load again a dialog box will pop up load we we'll say udl concentrated force no moment no pressure no this is not a surface shell it's not shell so what is it then line load this is a line we need to define a line load continue select the bodies for the load this is the body you want to assign a load done okay done now it will it will ask okay we want to assign a line like load what is the magnitude now define that loading component 1 is what is the loading in x component 2 is what's in y component 3 is what's in z but here x y are not there we need to define loading in y direction negative y direction downwards so we'll go to the option 2 we'll say minus 5 minus 5 newton per mm or kilo newton per meter it is one and the same thing see we we'll click okay correct it has assigned udl to this to the speed we are done with the loading in the same we'll create a boundary condition create a boundary condition there are multiple ways of creating boundary condition but few boundary conditions are already existing there in the first first part symmetry and asymmetry and caster see if we click on or continue why do you want assign boundary condition here at this node i have selected the node i want to fix it done okay these are already existing x symmetric wire in u1 direction is restrained u2 direction is restrained but there is an option at the bottom and caster that is all the directions all the translations and rotations at this node will be restrained that's what we want right we'll click okay it has created a fixed boundary condition over here that is what we wanted see we are done we are almost done we have created a part that is beam we have uh, assigned that we have created property for steel then assigned that property to our beam we have assembled it 
uh, in the assembly, we have created a step that is general static. We are done with the inter interaction because we didn't, we did not need that. Where in the load, we have created a UDL and of course boundary condition as well. Now we want to mesh. We go to the mesh. This is select part instance, seed part instance. What is the mesh size that you want to? So we'll create, it says dependent path cannot be edited or assigned mesh attributes. We have to make this as independent or we have to go to the part to mesh it. We are in the assembly, this will not be meshed unless we make it independent. How do we make it independent? Since this is in the assembly, this is the model tree, we'll go to assembly. See assembly here, okay. Instances, okay. 1D beam is there, okay. We'll right click it, make independent, and then we can easily mesh it in the assembly. Or there is another way go to the part here and mesh it there. Two ways assembly, if we try to mesh it, it says dependent part cannot be meshed. But if we make it independent here in the assembly, make it independent, now we will be able to mesh it in the assembly itself. See. Now, what is the approximate size of your mesh, meshed element? Since this is 5000, we'll create 100 mm element like this. That is the fundamental of this. This is based on finite elements, right? So, the domain that was of 5000 mm length will be divided into different elements, different small lengths of each of 100 mm and then what is going behind the scenes is equations are written and e those equations will be written now for each element then those will be solved the solutions will be you know the uh, will be like coupled solutions will be like a type of summed so uh, that is altogether a different story how finite element works but here let's keep it a 100 mm mesh size it is small enough okay we've just defined what is the size of the element now we need to go to the next here mesh part now we'll say mesh okay to mesh the part instance yes okay it has divided it into you'll be able to see this these elements better in 3d 3d model so we are done with the mesh as well. We have divided this whole beam into small, you know, small uh, elements. So our modeling is done. We are done with the modeling part. We have created a part. We have, we have created properties, assigned, uh, created assembly, they created step, interaction, loads and all. We have given section to the beam. The last part is job. Go to the job create a job but before this where do we want to save this model whole model you need to go to the file work directory set work directory see it is set at c temp in the c uh, drive of my computer there is a folder called a temp now i can go here browse I can change this, uh, you know, work directory. I can go to E. I'll create a folder here itself, new directory. I'll name it as Abacus for beginners. For beginners. Okay. Right. I'll click here. Okay. Now my work directory has changed. Okay. Now if I save it, Control S, it is, see, it's getting saved in Abacus for beginners. And this job that I'm going to create, the results will be in that folder only where I have created this work directory. So job one, I'll name it as uh, beam bending. Beam bending, a cantilever beam is analyzed here. Continue. You don't need to do anything. Okay. Now job has been created. If you go to job manager, job manager is there. 
We have just created it. We have not submitted it. Now we want to submit the job for the analysis. Let's click, click on submit. Submit. It is submitted. Now it is running. Right? You can monitor this as well. Monitor means what is happening to it. Okay, it's done. In a, since it's static analysis, it is completed it in one step itself. Done. It's completed. Now, how to see the results? Go to the results module. It's in okay 3D space. We'll go to there's a there are view options X Y. Okay. Now, what do we what are we interested in? What is the deflection at? Here are the results. Primary S minus stresses. U is the deflection. What is the maximum deflection? 1.229. 1.229. Since 1.229 is very, very small, 1.229 mm is very, very small, we are not able to see the deflected profile. But let's exaggerate it. Go to the options. Common. Uniform. Let's exaggerate this as 100 times. Okay. See. Or thousand times. Oh, the beam is bent like this, and the maximum deflection is at here. It won't. Uh, the value will remain the same, but we have exaggerated the deflected profile. How the beam has deflected? What is the final deflection? It's one point two two nine. Correct. So, what was our value uh, that we cal calculated analytically? One point two two mm. Oh, we are very, I mean, we are almost there. There will be some difference between this solution and the exact solution because this is approximate. Finite element analysis is an approximate analysis. Remember that. Now, okay, we are done. Uh, our FEM, I'll write it there, FEM result, FEM 1.229. So here FEM results are uh, delta max is equal to 1.229 mm. What is the bending stress? Bending stress, we need to go to S. S is the stresses. Maces, this is one Maces stress, but we need to find xx stress uh, flexural stresses that are along the longitudinal you know longitudinal this is the beam flexural stresses are like this compression tension only compression tension due to bending so we need to go to r11 uh sorry yeah so this is this is our flexural stress. So we need to find flexural stresses at at the end where the maximum movement occurred. That is here the blue. What is the value? Seven point six five eight. Seven point six five eight. Seven point six five eight. Sigma A is seven point six five eight MPA. There's a bit of difference. So, how to go to how to go near to this value 7.8? How to go there? We need to mesh it finer. You understood? So let's let's do one more try. We just need to go to the mesh, go to the size. We had started with 100 mm. We we'll say okay. Now 20 mm size. Or apply. Delete the previous mesh. Okay. Now, mesh part in a stennis. Say yes, it has meshed it finer. Go back, job, resubmit, submit, it will overwrite it. Okay, it is submitted, it's running. We can monitor it. Okay, it has started, it's completed. Done. Since this is static analysis and very simple geometry, so it doesn't take too much of time. Completed. Go to the results. Go to x, y, fine. Go to u. How is u changing? u2. u2. It is the blue here. 
color blue remember it's 1.229 it has not changed what about stress s what is s11 oh 7.78 we are moving closer 7. Point, next 7.78 mpa so to reach to this value we need to you know mesh it even finer and i hope that you will be able to do now you need to go to the mesh you need to you know go to seed path instance select a new uh, mesh size very finer then you will be able to do it i hope this lecture here if you try to replicate this problem i believe most of the, these modules you will you'll get aware of in the next video that will be more uh, uh, kind of uh, advanced version of this that will be a 3d beam 3d geometry of the beam and then we'll try to solve the same problem here we have created a one dimensional beam assigned a section and then solve it and we are very close to the to the solutions the idea here is it's not about uh, how the, you know close uh, how accurate we were but uh, if we mesh it finer you will definitely get uh, more you know more uh, accurate results but the idea was to get used to these tools how to create part how to create uh, sections how to create uh, you know assembly how to mesh the parts and you know how to submit the job so i hope uh, this video will be of a great help to you this is just a beginning uh, i think i should uh, wind up this video thank you so much for your time and thank you for watching i hope you will be there in the next video see you bye bye